Praise God. Praise the Lord. Um, you are welcome to the last Sunday in the month of July. How many of you are so excited? I am I'm believing that many of us we are really preparing because by next Sunday it is possible that most of us will not be here. Where will you be by that time? What did you say? You'll be in mission field at home. So are you ready to go home? You want to go for holidays? Actually, um, those of us who will be here while you are away, we'll be missing you so much, so we will not want you to go. We will want you to stay with us for a while. Will you like that? So you are tired of us. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay, we are not tired of you. So if you are, if you are desiring to go home, can I see you smile? Give somebody a high five. I'm going home very soon. <laughs> yes, I know it's 100 level 200 and probably the 300 level students that will be saying that. But for the medical lines, I know that you'll be saying, mm, we're still going to be here till August. So we still have some of you here with, <laughs> with you uh, to be wrapping minds together. Um, so what about your exams? How have been your exams? Did you really deal with the exams or the exams dealt with you? The exams dealt with you? No, I saw, I saw many of you, you, the way you were walking out of the examination hall, it was as if which kind of cheap questions were these ones? Anyways, whether it was tough or it was not tough, Everyone who had written one exam or the other, whether by guess or by hard work, your result will be amazing. There is somebody that is um, shaking in his heart. While I said, I said, ah, I'm not really sure. But do you know the God of wonder? Do you know the God who changes impossibility to possibility? If you believe that, can you say, my result is going to be the best? Because God will do a miracle. And that is your Lord in the name of Jesus. Can you give a clap offering unto the King of Kings? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, very many times when you all go home, many times we don't normally have some rest. I am not talking on behalf of any other person, but particularly me, myself. Many times I do have a lot of course, even in the middle of the night. I have had some times when my wife will pull me down and say, sleep, sleep. Say, so this person is calling. I don't know who the person is. And then say, well, let's pray together. And when the individual will want to talk, say, sir, I'm really, really troubled. I don't know. I don't know. Say, okay, please calm down. What exactly is the matter? Said, there's no problem, actually. It's just that I'm confused. I don't know what else to do. I'm bored at home. Ah, that's why you're calling me in the middle of the night. You are bored. So you are looking for somebody to engage. It is me that you now call in the middle of the night. Yes, as we have some very, very funny calls, we also have some that are very serious. 
individuals who will call and say, I am tired of my mom. I'm tired of my dad. In fact, I just wept away from their presence now. And I said, well, you will still have to go to them and apologize. Say, no, they are the ones that are wrong. I said, yes, I know that they are wrong. But two wrongs cannot make it right. Can you, wherever you are now, just kneel down by your bed and take some breath? After doing that, say, Jesus, thank you for my mom and dad. And try in your heart to take off whatever had been paining you about them or whatever they had said. Then tell yourself, I forgive you, mommy. She's only helping me. Now go back when you are settled, go back and kneel before mommy and say, Mom, I'm sorry. Whatever happened, I'm very sorry. Now there are so many, many calls that way. Last week, when um, the university chaplain called me and said, This today I will be talking, and then on Wednesday he mentioned that he wanted to talk on the force of um, the force of something. The force of obedience. Is it knowledge or obedience? Knowledge. Obedience. Yes. He was thinking of saying or talking on um, the force of obedience. So I told him, sir, why you said that? Something came to my heart that these guys are going home and then I think we should talk about how they can maximize their leisure or their early days so that we will receive lesser calls during the early day. And he said, ah, that, that one also goes. That one also is fine. So this morning, because of that, I will be talking and challenging or encouraging or charging every one of us how to maximize your leisure maximizing your leisure or your holidays. I, I, I saw very beautiful clue from the scriptures on how to maximize your leisure. So I want us to read together or probably you read with me or along with me from Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, there's a beautiful story there that I will want us to look at, and then I will give three suggestions on how to maximize your leisure. Genesis chapter 18, 1 to 10. Do we have it on the screen so that every one of us may go to NIV to be precise? Thank you. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great tree of Mammon while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent, relaxing. In the heat of the day, Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, if I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest, leisure, under this tree. Let me get you something to eat. You can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. Verse 6, so Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three shares of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to his servant, who hurried to prepare it. Verse 8, he then brought some curds and milk and the calf 
that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Verse 9. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There in the tent, he said. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will be, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent also, which was behind him. Maximizing your leisure. Maximizing your leisure. First of all, I began to ask myself, what exactly is leisure? And leisure, to me, is free time. Free time. Free time, when you say free time, you are talking about free from lectures, free from assignments, free from, can you help me? Freedom, chapel, chapel, chapel. Free from <laughs> morning devotion, evening devotion. Eh? From, from projects. Freedom from that troublesome roommate. Free from the cafeteria, the food of cafeterias. So you are thinking about free time from a lot of things. In fact, free from the confines of Bowen University. But Miles Moreau said, The currency of life is time. Time is the currency of life. And that time can be spent, it can be wasted, and it can be invested. So whether it's a free time or not a free time, Time is meant to be spent, spent on something. So whether you leave Bowen University and you are free from all that we have mentioned and you go home, you will still have to spend your time. Somebody said, I think it was John C. Maxwell. He said, wise people spend their times around what will enhance their purpose in life. Wise people spend their times on what will enhance their purpose in life. So to him, according to him, he said, whenever I'm in leisure, whenever I am in my free time, what I do is to think around my purpose. I will take a biro, a pen, and begin to jot things down. Because at leisure, a lot of things, ideas, do flock into him, so he will have to be writing. According to him, he said he will even have to use it with some best people. People that will help him to think better. He spends most of his leisure around people who will help him to do better in life. So I began to imagine that when we are at leisure, what exactly do we use our times to do? What do we spend our time on? Do we waste our time, that precious time,
to use either to sleep or to, I'm now free, so I sleep and sleep and sleep, wake up, eat, sleep, wake up, eat, sleep, play game, and watch movie, wake up, sleep, eat, and all of that. Is that all that you want to use your time to do the precious time? You know these ten virgins in the Bible? Five were foolish, five were wise. What made them termed foolish or wise was the way they spent their time and on what they spent their times on. They were actually going for a party. Okay, they were going for marriage ceremony. You go for marriage ceremony at leisure. Now these ones were waiting, waiting for the beginning of the commencement of the wedding. So they were sitting at leisure. And Bible says, if you look at that scriptures very well, those ones who were termed wise had done extra things. While they sat and before they got to that place, they did extra because they had a purpose. They, had, they, had, they knew where they were going, where they were heading to. So they were not looking at, I'll be sitting down alone, but they were busy trying to get things in order to make their purpose come to reality. And it was because they spent their times well and wisely, that was why they were called the wise. So it is possible to be termed wise by how you spend your leisure. It is also, you may also be termed foolish by the way you spend your leisure. I am believing that many of us who are here, we are termed wise, we are called wise or wise people because you, I know that many of us will be thinking, thinking on what exactly I will invest my holidays on. There was an individual who was about going home one, um, one semester like that and said, throughout this semester, I have a vision, I have a goal, and now I want to read around that vision. So went to the office and started packing books. I'm going to read this, I'm going to read that, I'm going to read that on my purpose. That individual actually graduated with the first class. Are you going to be a wise person or a foolish person by the way you use your leisure? I saw three benefits in observing your leisure wisely. Three benefits, and that's found in that passage that we read. I don't know whether many of you read that passage along with me, but if you read it, please let's quickly go over that. Number one, the scripture says, Abraham was sitting at the entrance of his tent. He had walked all day. He had traveled all day. He had done all that he needed to do throughout the day, so he was a little bit tired, and then decided to sit by the entrance of and under a tree. Sitting under the tree, as at that time, is like having a leisure. For him, it was a moment of thinking, a recap of what he had done in the past. And by the time he was doing that, all of a sudden, the Bible says, he looked up and saw. So leisure could assist you to look further, to think better, and to see clearer, to see what ordinarily, while you are so busy, you may not be able to see. So for this guy, he was, he was 
sitting, thinking, and ruminating, all of a sudden something told him, look up. Think further. And as he looked up, he saw, he saw divine beings. Actually, many people must have been passing that place, but he did not come back on them. But when he saw these three individuals, something told him, you need to tap something from these people. Call them. And then he called them. He ran to them. Please come. Please come. So, leisure can help you to think further and also to see clearer. Number two, you remember that after everything that he had been able to do with them, serving them, washing their feet, preparing meal, service, the end of the thing was, they said, where is your wife? Sarah. Said she's in, he's inside, she's inside. Now, by this time next year, your needs will be met. Your need will be met. So, I got from that passage that leisure can also lead you to your needs being met divinely. Because that time, you may be spending time alone, spending time with God, and somehow, somehow, your needs are being met. Number one, you can see clearer, think better when you are alone, when you are at leisure. I'm trying to tell you what you can use your leisure to do and the benefits. Number two, there are blessings of your needs being met divinely. Do we understand that? Do we understand? Number next, Bible says, they were refreshed. After they ate and all of that, the Bible says they were refreshed. So refreshing, refreshing comes in what? In leisure. Those three benefits are very, very important. Number one, the benefit of seeing clearer. Number two, your needs may be met divinely. Number three, what is it? You'll be refreshed. Those are the goals of leisure, which you need to now plan around. You need to think and plan around these three major things, three major benefits. Will I be able to think clearer about my purpose if you ask many of us here? After school, what else? You say, I don't know. I'm always shocked when I ask even graduating people even those ones in NYC, excuse me, when you, two months or three months to go, what next? Say, ah, uh, sir, you see, I've been praying. Praying? When? How? Till now, you are about to finish service. You are still saying you are praying. Somebody will say, um, actually, I'm in um, computer science and all of that. Okay, what is your purpose? Say, my purpose um, I'm thinking that I will be a caterer. What? I'm serious. I'm serious with what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about when I'm alone because I have a lot of them outside there. And you say, ah, you are in computer. And then you say you come, you after spending money and your time, that precious time, the next thing is I will be a caterer. Well, it's not a bad thing. Is it a bad thing? No. But how do you combine what you are spending your time on campus for or with that one that you have as a purpose? Why come in for that one? Why not spend your time on that? So it can assist you to think around your purpose. Sit down when you are at home. Stop gallivanting around, running here and there. Sit down, take a pen, take a, a book, and try to write. Think, what is my life meant to do on earth? You'll be saying, ah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm still young. How young are you? How young are you? 
Say, I'm still 16. I'm still 17. How will you tell me that you are 16 and 17? And yet you don't know what you will do with the rest of your life. And you know black, white, you know how to dress, you know what you want. And yet you don't know what exactly your composition is for. That lesion is meant for that. Use it to think clearer. Purposeless individuals run a means. It is also the time to serve. When you serve the Lord, before you know it, your needs will be met. Number next is for re rejuvenating your strength, lost strength, away from all that you have been doing in the school. Now, sit down and eat well. Sleep well. Do all that you need to do to make sure that you are refreshed. Sam Adeyemi, I listened to him some times ago. And he said, I don't joke with my leisure. When it is time for me to go for holiday, I go for it. I don't take anything along with me. I go with my wife or alone sometimes. And then I go to a place where I will not be disturbed. To him, he says, he will take shower and take his time in the shower, praying, tonguing, smiling to himself, singing melodiously, feeling relaxed, and then comes out, he will read some books, go back, shower, and all of that, think. He said most of the revelations that he had about his ministry comes from there. So after some times when he leaves the leisure or wherever he had gone, and then goes back to his work, to his table, he sees things differently, new. You have just like three months or less than to come back to Bowen University. If you don't use that period well, and so that you become refreshed, by the time you come to this place, you will become bored again. So it is going to be very good if you can sit with yourself, by yourself, and then get refreshed. I want to suggest to you three major ways to spend or maximize your leisure. I want to suggest three activities to maximize your leisure. I know that some of you will say, I know my, I know, I know, I know what to do, I know my. I'm not talking to everybody. If you know what you want, I'm not talking to you. But I think you can still benefit a little bit. But for some of us who do not know how to think around that line, I want to suggest to you just three. There are so many of them, but I'm bringing them under three subtopics. Number one, or let me just give it to you now, said there are three Ds, so that you can remember it vividly. Three Ds to maximize your leisure. Three Ds. Number one D is to deepen your relationship with God. At leisure, deepen your relationship with God. Young Cho of blessed memory. I do listen to him more and more. In fact, I learned how to pray the tabernacle prayer from him. The tabernacle prayer from, from Yongi Cho. Yongi Cho said, every day he must pray for six hours. Six continuous hours. 
And after those six hours, everything for the whole day will be downloaded to him on his knees. It was the same thing with Jacob. Jacob was all that his life will comprise of, did not get at where he was until he was traveling and he slept somewhere. He slept in the presence of God and everything about his life was downloaded to him. Apostle Arome, he said, nobody can stay under him or pastor under him if you cannot pray expressly for 10 hours. I don't know how many of you have heard of John Anosiki. John Anosiki. How many of you have heard of that name? John Anosiki is, uh, is in um, Cape Town, South Africa. He said one day his friend died. His friend, bosom friend, died of cancer. And he became angry. He said, why would this young man die? Why will he die now? And they've taken him to his village. So he had to run to that village. Are you all listening to me? Are you listening to me, please? Okay. Now, he, he said he ran to that place. And when he got to the dead body, his anger, his anger made him to slap him on his chest. Say, get up! The man did not get up. So he was provoked inside him. And he said for days, and months, he locked himself. He did not go for any program. He locked himself in a house and was groaning before God. He was deepening his relationship with God. I said, Father, but you said, we will raise the dead. He said, he began to burn in his heart. I can raise the dead. If Jesus rose the dead, the one that was buried, I can also do it. He said, he said you, you, will, you will do more than what I have done. So he was provoked in his heart. He said he consecrated himself for days, for months. And after that, let me fast forward. He said while he was in the, in, in the church like this and was ministering, all of a sudden, one of the church workers fell and used his head on the ground and blood was gushing out from his nose and mouth. He said he became provoked and then he traveled the way the Lord taught him in the secret place. What the Lord revealed to him in the secret place. He said he went close and called his name. Come back. The third, first time, second time, he said the third time, he jacked back to life. Then he said, sir, I heard your voice in the realms of the, I was traveling on a lonely, and I heard your voice, the voice of my pastor in the realms of the spirit. Voices can travel in the realms of the spirit if you can deepen your relationship with God. if you can relate with God. That is the time that you need to deepen your relationship in Bible study. I remember one time like that when I was to enter ministry and the Lord told me, go and lock yourself in a room. You are not coming out even to the sitting room. Lock yourself there. And I locked myself. It was right there just for three days. God showed me many, many things that I'm doing even today. Right from that time. Another time he told me, you can read the whole Bible in 21 days. The whole Bible in 21 days. The whole Bible. I thought I couldn't do it, but with commitment, 
and observation of my leisure. You would think that you don't have the time, but you have the time, guys. You have it, I'm telling you. Can you reduce many, many, many things that you do that do not have a direct relationship with your purpose in life? Can you do that? By the time you do that, before you know it, before you know it, you will be doing wonders. Take your time to study the Bible at leisure in deep, deepening your relationship with God. Take your time to pray. Take your time to relate with God. Number two, number two, develop your social responsibility. Develop your social capital. What is number one? Can I hear you say what's number one? Number two, develop your social capital. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 says, He who walks with the wise will be wise, but the companions of fools suffer harm. I told you before that John C. Maxwell said he spends his time with a lot of good people. So why don't you use that period to spend your leisure with your family members? Create a bond with them. Use that time to ask questions. Questions about your life, about your family, about a lot of things that you don't understand, use that time to ask from your parents or from loved ones. Can you use that time to think together with your loved ones at home? Can you eat together? Eat together. Can you take time out together? Can you play together? By so doing, you are creating a bond. Can you pray together? Can you study the word together? Can you also offer an helping hand at that period? Somebody said that period is the time she wants to use to gather secondary school students and teach them chemist, um, what do you call it, biology. Because she was good in biology. She said, I will gather them together, and I mean the neighborhood, and teach them. More so that they want to write NECO very soon. Can you offer that help without pay? Can you do that? You are only expressing, um, what do you call it, um, community service. Number last, number three, do a new thing that you have not done before to strengthen your purpose. Do a new thing that you've not done before. That is the time you can read a new book. And it should be of the interest, I mean, the area of your purpose. That is the time to learn something that you've not known before. Like me, some of my leisure, I used it to learn how to bake cake. I didn't know how to bake cake. Spongy um, cake, I mean, what do you call it? Huh? Are you normal? Sp uh, what do you say? Spongy cake. Yes. So I tried to learn how to do it, and I baked it from the beginning to the end. Yes, I will bake it and bring it to some of, some of you very soon. It was there and by myself that I learned how to bake bread. Yes, home bread. 
Well, I, I didn't know how to, how to cook fried rice. So unfortunately, my wife was not around that time who used to cook it. And I didn't have um, this um, connection. My, my daughter was to celebrate her birthday. I had to learn how to cook, though it was not very fine. But, but I learned, I, I cooked fried rice. And my children ate it. And they smiled halfway. But I'm better than some of you. <laughs> so that is the time you can learn to cook some new foods that you have not been able to cook before. That's the time that you can learn some languages that you've not learned before. That's the time to learn how... To, somebody will say, Babi, Babi, ha, me. Go and be learning how to bab. Anytime I travel out, I don't bab my hair until I come back. Because babbing of hair is thousands of naira. So I will be keeping that money and I will not bab my hair. Assuming I know how to do it, I will do it by myself. So that's the time to learn all of those things. You can learn musical instruments. Take your time to do a new thing. Before you know it, time will have gone. There's a lady here in chemistry. She learned how to, how to draw. And the thing is amazing. When she got home, she went to register herself in that thing again. And she's now perfect. And I think she's making some money there too. That is also the time that you can put your story together. Just like my sister who gave a story now, I mean, what happened to her. You can put things together and write. You can write a book now. There's a lady who graduated from here before she graduated. In 100 level, she wrote her first book and was published. And that book is being used in primary school. Now, she wrote her second book when she was in 300 level in Bowen University here. When she graduated, she, Macmillan, they employed her. My dear friends, what is the first thing you can use your leisure for? Number one, can I hear you say clearly? Number two, number three, do a new thing. I know the Holy Spirit is witnessing, witnessing to somebody here and say, okay, beyond that, I can do this, I can do that. Can you bow down your heart and begin to say, Holy Spirit, can you minister to me? This leisure must not be a waste. That time must not be wasted. Can you begin to think? It's not all about prayers now. Can you think when I get home, what will I do with this time? Time will be accounted for. Somebody will say, I'm graduating, sir. It should be, I'm graduating. When you graduate, what is the next thing that you want to do for the rest of your life? Do you know it? Can you quickly think just for one minute, one minute, one minute? Lord, what will I use? What will I use this leisure to do? If you can't maximize your time, you are already wasting your life because you will give account of the time that you have spent on earth, both leisure and on leisure. Help me, dear loving Father. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 27 says, I do hands at the devil's workshop, I do lips at the mouthpiece, his mouthpiece. Oh God, I don't want to be an idle hand, idle mouth. Help me to be resourceful, useful, responsible. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Hey, thank you, Lord. Can you quickly, I have just felt in my spirit that somebody should speak in tongues just for a few seconds. Can you go ahead and speak in tongues? He says something is going to drop into your spirit. As you speak before the Lord, Riyako Pasi Kata, Nepati Kasi Korea Sinderebosha, Matika, somebody may be laughing now 
But you don't know that. You don't know that you are just making jests of yourself before God. Ah, whereas that is when God can give you the revelation of something to carry you for the rest of your life. I hear that somebody is going to be receiving new things, newness. An idea is coming to your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can we shout a thunderous amen?